Now the subject that I'm going to go into is called the true servants. Now I chose this very important subject, the true servants, to go into because a sister posted, posted a question to me and she asked me, can I break down the 144,000? Now I'm going to go into this subject and I'm going to give the sister a little understanding about the 144,000 and the true servants of the Most High. Now, if you have your scriptures, I want you to follow along with me. Now, but before I say that, it may not be possible for me to get to every single question that a lot of you brothers and sisters may ask me on the comment board. You know, there's a lot of different people that come to me and ask me, can I do a subject on this or can I do a subject on that? And if I haven't gotten around to it, I'll try my best to get around to it. But you got to remember, there are a lot of different brothers and sisters that are coming to me and they're asking me, can I do a a subject on this or a subject on that but I felt that this was important and uh, all the questions are important but I figured this was a really a really important question to go into so I'm going to try to answer the question okay so if I don't get to all of your questions be patient I'll do my best to get to every single one of your questions in its due time okay now this subject is called the true servants and it's also breaking down 144,000 and showing the people exactly according to the scriptures what is the 144,000 and what is it going to consist of. Now I kind of touched on that and covered that in other subjects but okay I'll go into it a little bit deeper here and kind of give you some spiritual understanding. I'm going to show you what the service of, of a true servant is supposed to be doing. Here is Ezekiel the second chapter here's the book of Ezekiel the second chapter we're gonna read verse 1 and he and he said unto me son of man stand upon thy feet and I will speak unto thee and the spirit entered into me when he spake unto me and set me upon my feet that I heard him that spake unto me now this is a vision okay that Ezekiel is having now the Most High is going to communicate what he wants Ezekiel to know listen and he said unto me son of man I send thee to the children of Israel to a rebellious nation that has rebelled against me they and their fathers have transgressed against me even unto this very day <coughs> so the Most High is sending the prophet Ezekiel to tell the children of Israel the errors and the faults of their ways that's a true servant that a true servant's job and true servant's position is to warn his people when they're going off and when they're making mistakes. See, a lot of people have a problem with me about certain videos that I've done and how I've actually mentioned organizations and, and if it th different things like that. But no, the Most High told the prophet Ezekiel to go and warn the people and tell them the errors of their ways to their face. See, you brothers... And sisters, y'all not reading the Bible. And that's why I don't really deal with y'all. I'll just delete your comments or block you off my channel. Because you're not dealing with the scriptures. You're not dealing with the truth. You don't have understanding. You don't know what you're talking about. Okay? The prophet Ezekiel was sent by the Most High to go to the rebellious house of Israel and warn them. Okay? Now read it again. Verse 3. And he said unto me, Son of man, I sent thee to the children of Israel, to a rebellious nation that has rebelled against me. They and their fathers have transgressed against me even unto this very day. Even to this very day that we're walking on this earth. The children of Israel are still tr uh, transgressing against the Heavenly Father every day. Okay? For they are imputed children and stiff-hearted. I do send thee unto them. And thou shalt say unto them, Thus says the Lord God. And they, whether they will hear or whether they will forbear, for they are a rebellious house. Whether, the, whether our people will listen or whether they choose not to listen. You've done your job by warning them. That's what I did with all of my videos. Now I'm showing you, I'm leading you up to the 144,000. But I'm showing you right here that the Most High set Ezekiel apart. He set him aside, separate from the nation of Israel. And he, you, you, we don't read anything about Ezekiel and his counterparts we just read about Ezekiel he was set apart and his position was to go out and warn the children of Israel about the errors of their ways 
that if they repented, they would gain favor by, favor by the Most High. But if they chose to rebel, we're going to go on and I'm going to show you the punishment of those of our people who chose not to inherit to the words of the Most High. So, it says, And they, whether they will hear or whether they will forbear, for they are a rebellious house. Yet shall they know, yet shall know that there has been a prophet among them. Verse 6. And thou, son of man, be not afraid of them, neither be afraid of their words. Many brothers will come out and attack you, and sisters will verbally try to attack, even on the comment board. But the Most High said, don't be afraid of their words. And, and thou, son of man, be not afraid of, of them, neither be afraid of, the, of their words. Other brothers trying to threaten you, um, verbally trying to attack you, verbally trying to insult you. The Most High said, don't be afraid of them, neither their words. Neither be afraid of their words, though, bri though briars and thorns be with thee, and thou doest dwell among scorpions. So the father is, is uh, he's kind of like relating our people with that type of mentality to a scorpion who is ready to kill. That some of your people will actually attack you physically for what you're trying to bring out to them and what you're trying to show them. Many of your brothers and sisters will verbally and physically attack you. A true servant is going to warn his people regardless of the persecution that he is going to endure. He's still going to do it. So many people may have problems with the videos that I put out. So what? How do you think the people felt in the days of Ezekiel when he was warning them? Did they like it? What happened to the apostle Stephen? He was stoned and put to death. Because they were cut to the heart of the things that Stephen was bringing to their face. That's the problem with a lot of our people, as I said before. They don't want to hear the truth to their face. Okay? I did my job. I showed these different groups. Alright? And thou, son of man, be not afraid of them, neither be afraid of their words. Though briars and thorns be with thee, and thou doest dwell among scorpions, be not afraid of their words. Nor be dismayed at their looks when they give you evil looks, mean mug looks. You know how a lot of our people are. You know, they try to look you up and down and give you a real grizzly type look, an ice grill type look, trying to frighten you. The Most High said, no, don't be afraid of that. Don't be afraid of the comments that they write on the comment board. And if you happen to bump into them in the streets, don't be afraid of them. A true servant is going to continue to keep teaching regardless of how many times people try to verbally or physically attack you or try to intimidate, intimidate you, antagonize you, frighten you. No, nah, a true servant is not going to allow that to frighten them off the mission. The Most High said, I mean, the scriptures say that we should uh, uh, fear God rather than men. So we should have no fear of no man on this earth. So don't think you can frighten me on the comment board. Don't think you can frighten me in, in, out in the streets. You know, if, if, if this was the case, then I wouldn't be teaching. All right? And thou shalt speak. Uh, and it says, be not afraid of their words, nor be dismayed at their looks, though they be a rebellious house. And thou shalt speak my words unto them, whether they will hear or whether they will forbear, for they are most rebellious. But thou, son of man, hear what I say unto thee. Be not, be not thou rebellious like that rebellious house open thy mouth and eat that I give thee so the Most High set Ezekiel apart he sanctified Ezekiel and set him apart from the nation of Israel he was part of the nation of Israel but the Most High separated him you don't read about a congregation that he belonged to he was a prophet unto the children of Israel he didn't have a congregation he was sent to warn them and to teach them okay Let's go to verse 3. I mean chapter 3. Ezekiel verse 3. Going into the subject of a true servant. This is some of the avenues that a servant of the Most High is supposed to do. Ezekiel 3 and 4. And he said unto me, Son of man, go, get thee unto the house of Israel, and speak with, with words, speak with my words unto them. Go unto the children of Israel and speak unto them with my words, not using your own words. Not coming out of your own mind, Proverbs, the third chapter, verse 5. But trusting in every word of the Most High and then speaking those words to the people. Okay? For thou art not sent to a people of strange speech and of hard language unto other nations. Now, what that means is 
You may have people in different countries that don't speak the dialect that you speak. You can't communicate with them. So the Most High said, go to a people in which you can communicate with. Okay? My people in America, Central and South America, up in Canada. Well, mainly in America, different islands in the Caribbeans that do speak English. Or some that know how to speak English. Even there may be some in Central and South America that can speak English up in Canada. You're supposed to go to a people, our people... That you can speak their dialect. And they can understand yours. Simple as that. For thou art not sent to a people of strange speech. And of hard language. A dialect that you can't understand. But go to the people who can speak your dialect. And, they can, and you can understand theirs. But to the house of Israel. Not to many people of strange speech. And of hard language. Whose words thou canst not understand. Everybody got that? Surely I had sent thee to them. They would have hearkened unto thee. <clears throat> the prophet Ezekiel was sent to the nation of Israel. At this time he was not sent to other nations or other nationalities of people. Now the scripture says. Surely had I sent thee to them. They would have hearkened unto thee because some of the Gentiles would have listened to what Ezekiel had to say. But our people, even to this very day, are still hard-hearted, stiff-necked, and rebellious. And still do not want to listen to instructions. Okay? But the house of Israel will not hearken unto thee, for they will not hearken unto me. For all the house of Israel are imputed and hard-hearted. Behold, I have made thy face strong against their faces... And thy forehead strong against their foreheads, as an adamant harder than flint, have I made thy forehead. Meaning the Most High is strengthening your face, your appearance, your courage, your backbone, your spirit, your soul, your mind, and body. No man can frighten you. I have made thy forehead fear them not, neither be dismayed at their looks. Though they be a rebellious house. Moreover he said unto me. Son of man. All my words that I shall speak unto thee. Receive in thy heart. <clears throat> and hear with thy ears. And go get thee to them of the, of the captivity. Unto the children of thy people. And speak unto them and tell them. Thus says the Lord God. Wherefore. Uh, whether they will hear or whether they will forbear. So the Most High said, regardless if they want to hear or not, still go to them and still talk to them. Still tell them what I told you to tell them, regardless if they listen or not. You think many brothers, um, when I did certain videos about interracial relationships and different subjects about this and different subjects about that, you think they'll listen? Some out of the mist will. Some sisters out of the mist will listen. But more so, the, more, the most majority of them won't. The Most High said, don't worry about that. Just tell them. That's all I want you to do. It's not about you trying to, trying to uh, convince them. Just tell them. And then let me deal with it afterwards. Alright? Now, let's go to Ezekiel. Alright? You, you can't... You, you have, have you ever heard the old, the old expression, you can lead a horse to water, but you can't make them drink? Okay, so you warn them. And you tell them, but that's all you're supposed to do. Here is Ezekiel 33, verse 7. Now, we're getting into the 144,000, so just be patient. I'm showing you the, the, the service of a servant of the Most High. And I'm showing you exactly what the, a servant of the Most High is supposed to do. Regardless of whether people may agree with some of the things that you teach or some of the things that you do. Doesn't matter. You have been given instructions by the Most High to tell the people the truth to their face. Regardless whether they like it or not. And to open rebuke also. That's another avenue of being a servant of the Most High. Many brothers and sisters ain't reading this book. Okay. Here is Ezekiel 33 verse 7. So thou, O son of man, I have set thee a watchman unto the house of Israel. Therefore thou shalt hear the word at my mouth and warn them from me. And warn them from me. Now how is it that it's kind of funny how certain brothers can get out and they can... <clears throat> Teach this and teach that. And tell other brothers about this and other brothers about that. But when you say something about the conduct of what they're doing, they get mad with you. But they can tell other brothers and sisters out there about the mistakes that they made. I, I had to deal with that myself. You think, you think I was always teaching like this? No. 
I had to get chastised. I made mistakes in my life, but I learned from my mistakes. I, I, I understood the chastisement, and I took heed to it. You don't get mad. You just listen to the instructions, go into the scriptures and study for yourself, and uh, take heed to, of the chastisement and the warning. You understand? So, this is what the scriptures told, told a servant of the Most High to do. So, so uh, Ezekiel 33 and 7. So thou, O son of man, I have set thee a watchman unto the house of Israel. Therefore thou shalt hear the word at my mouth and warn them from me. When I say unto the wicked, O wicked man, thou shalt surely die. If thou doest not speak to warn the wicked from his way, that wicked man shall die in his iniquity. But his blood will I require at thy hand. Nevertheless, if thou warn the wicked of his way to turn from it, and if he do not turn from his way, he shall die in his iniquity, but thou hast delivered thy soul. You see, that's, that's all I tried to do in all of the videos that I've made. The video I did, a message to Jay-Z and Beyonce. The video that I did uh, uh, to Kanye West and even to Kim Kardashian. Um, the, the, a message, uh, uh, the video, a message to uh, the ISUPK. Message to the Great Millstone. Uh, message to Elder Rikab, the GOCC, open rebuke, GOCC and listeners. Um... Message to the black man, prostitution, uh, and the list goes on the videos that I've done. I'm using Ezekiel 33 and 7 all the way down as, go, as far as we've gotten so far, verse 9. I'm using a whole book of Ezekiel 33, but actually I'm using 7 all the way to 19. So why get mad? Alright, I'm only showing you what the Most High has put upon my spirit to show you. Alright. 10. Therefore, O thou son of man, speak unto the house of Israel. Thus ye speak, saying, If our transgressions and our sins be upon us, and we pine away in them, how should we then live? Say unto them, As I live, says the Lord God, I have no pleasure in the death of the wicked. The Most High has no pleasure in destroying our people. He wants to save us. According to St. John 14 and 6, I am the way, the truth, and the life, and no man shall enter, uh, get to the Father but by me. So he has no pleasure in seeing our destruction. But that the wicked turn from his way and live. Turn ye, turn ye, turn ye from your evil ways, for why will ye die, O house of Israel? Do you see that? A true servant of the Most High is supposed to tell his people the truth that they face. Therefore, thou son of man, Say unto the children of thy people, the righteousness of the righteous, the righteousness of the righteous shall not deliver him in the day of his transgression. As for the wickedness of the wicked, he shall not fall thereby in the day that he turneth from his wickedness. Neither shall the righteous be able to live for his righteousness in the day that he sinneth. When I shall say to the righteous, Thou shalt surely live, if he trusts in his own righteousness and commit iniquity, all his righteousness shall not be remembered. If a man is proud and arrogant. You got a lot of brothers out there that are very arrogant and very proud. Because they may have a large fellowship. A lot of brothers and sisters are members of their congregation. So they become arrogant, boastful. You understand? Even though they may be doing a good thing as teaching the people. But they've allowed the spirit of vanity, pride, and arrogancy to emerge inside of their souls. So they become propped up with power. The scripture says, he that is exalted shall be abased. The Mosai said, he will remember your righteousness no more. For all the glorious things you may have done for the kingdom of salvation, the Mosai said, he will remember your righteousness no more when you become arrogant and proud and uh, vanity. You, you allow vanity to enter into your spirit, proudness and arrogancy. You get lifted up with pride because your membership is growing. Other organizations may have a larger mass of members in their group. So a lot of the leaders become arrogant and proud. I've dealt with that in other videos. Where men are trying to exalt themselves, trying to be more than who they are. Alright, 13 again. When I shall say to the righteous that he shall surely live, if he trusts in his own righteousness and commit iniquity, all his righteousness shall not be remembered, but for his iniquity that he has committed, he shall die for it. Again, when I say unto the wicked, Thou shalt surely die if he turn from his sin and do that which is lawful and right 
if the wicked restore the pledge, give again that he had robbed, that he, that he, again, that he had robbed, walk in the statutes of life without committing iniquity, he shall surely live and he shall not die. None of his sins that he has committed shall surely be mentioned unto him. He has done that which is lawful and right, he shall surely live. This is the prerequisite of a true servant. Acknowledging his faults, yeah, we're still going to sin. We're still going to make mistakes here and there. Okay, because I'm going to go into the, a subject called overcoming sin. And I'm going to show you, I'm going to go into the scriptures and I'm going to, I'm going to show you that we still struggle with day-to-day -day adversities and tribulations every single day. But overcoming is, is, is the battle. All right? Overcoming is the battle that we're fighting. So every day it's a fight. Every day it's a struggle. Every day it's tribulation. The scripture says, through much tribulation shall we enter, into, in much tribulation and suffering shall we enter into the kingdom of heaven. So we're going to go through perils and tribulations and sufferings in our lives. Sin may uh, ha occur in our lives. This is talking about an outright sin of fornication, an outright sin of, let's say, lewd lasciviousness, homosexuality, lesbianism, uh, drug addiction, uh, idolatry, paganistic worship, paganistic practices. These major, major sins that Israel was doing in the sight of the Most High that separated Israel uh, from the Most High, but the Most High still had love for Israel and that he remembered the covenant he established with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and he would never break that covenant. So he's sending a prophet to go to the people and to warn the people to come back to him. And this is what Ezekiel did. Okay? Verse 16, none of his sins that had that he has committed shall be mentioned unto him. He has done that which is lawful and right, he shall surely live. Yet the children of thy people say, The way of the Lord is not equal, but as for them, their way is not equal. When the righteousness when the righteous turn from his righteousness and committeth iniquity, he shall even die thereby. But if the wicked turn from his wickedness and do that which is lawful and right, he shall live thereby. You see that? Again, that's the prerequisites. Now, the, the scripture also says that he set Israel, and he set certain men in Israel as the watchmen to warn the wicked of their way. That if the wicked change from their ways and change from the errors and the mistakes of their ways, then that wicked man shall live. If the watchmen see the wicked doing wickedness and warn them not, yet they still die in their iniquity, the Father will require their blood upon that man's hands because he knew the truth and he didn't try to save his brother. So many people got upset with me for certain videos that I did. But I did my job. I did Ezekiel 33 and 7. I don't care if you get upset. A lot, and a lot of you brothers that are part of these different organizations, many of you are young brothers, young women. You haven't been versed in this Bible long enough to call yourself trying to debate with somebody or trying to pull a scripture and you're pulling it without understanding. Some of you are not even pulling the scriptures. You guys are children, man. You guys are young kids uh, 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 as members of a lot of these different organizations. Your spirits have not been developed yet. You're not strong enough. You're not built up yet. You're not, you have not acquired the meat yet. You're still dealing with milk. So, so the comments that you make on the comment board show me how young you really are. Show me that you still are a baby spiritually in this word. You got a lot of these young boys still trying to be cool out there, still trying to have that, that street corner mentality and then they come into this word, but they're still coming from out of the world. They're still coming off the street. So they don't have the spiritual understanding to really decipher prophecies in this book, to understand what the scriptures are saying. They're, they're babies in this word. So I can listen to your comments and read them on the comment board and see that you guys are babies. That's why I'll either delete you or I'll block you from having that foolishness. The scripture says, avoid foolish questions, contention, and striving over the law for these things are unprofitable and vain. The scriptures also says, speak not into the ears of a fool, for he will despise wisdom at thy mouth. So I don't waste my time on the comment board with some of these GOCC guys coming on the comment board and they say, well, he deletes come because you're coming with foolishness. You're not coming with wisdom. You're still kids. You're still children. And I can read your comments and I can see that you're still dealing with a young boy's mentality. You're not built up in this word yet. 
and you pulling stuff that don't you don't even know what you you don't even know what you're talking about. You you you're, you're pulling scriptures that you don't have no understanding on. Some of you and some of you are not even pulling scriptures. You're just coming off your own emotions. I'm not wasting my time with you guys. All right. So everybody got Ezekiel 33 and 7 all the way to 19 to understand what that means. A servant is supposed to observe this and do his best to the best of his and her ability to obey it. All right. Now. Let's go to Ezekiel, the ninth chapter. We're staying in the book of Ezekiel for a minute. And I'm going to lead up to 144,000, so just be patient. Here is Ezekiel, the ninth chapter, verse 1. He cried also in my ears with a loud voice, saying, Cause them that have charge over the city to draw near, even every man with his destroying weapon in his hand. And behold, six men came from the way of the higher gate, which lies toward the, the north, and every man a slaughter weapon in his hand. And one man, and one man among them was clothed with inkling, excuse me, with linen, with a writer's inkhorn by his side. And they went in and stood beside the brazing altar. And the glory of God, and the glory of the God of Israel. Some brothers may have a problem with me using the word. I'm just reading the scriptures as it is. The Bible says, add not unto his words, okay, or you will be reproved as a liar. I'm just reading the Bible as it is. I've already did videos explaining that. A word to the Hebrew Israelites, I already explained all that. I don't have to go back. To, to those of you who follow my videos for the past two and a half years, you already know how I teach. And you know what I teach. So I don't have to keep going back and forth to some of you brothers and sisters say, why do you use the word God or Christ? Watch my video, A Word to the Hebrew Israelites, and get the understanding. I'm just reading the scriptures as it is. All right. And the glory, this is Ezekiel, the ninth chapter, verse three. And the glory of, of the God of Israel was gone up from the cherubim, whereupon he was to the threshold of the house. And he called, the, called to the men clothed with linen, which had the writer's inkhorn by his side. And the Lord said unto him, go through the midst of the city, though through the midst of Jerusalem and set a mark upon the foreheads of the men that sigh and cry for all the abomination that be done in the midst thereof. So the Mosai told the angel and the men, basically, because this is a vision he's seeing, to set a mark upon these men. Meaning mark that brother right there. Mark that brother right there for all the men who sighed and cried for the abomination done in the city. The Bible says there is not word, one idle word that man shall speak. That God does not hear. Psalms the 19th chapter verse 1 and 2 says. Basically in a, in a summarizing it up. It says there is not one speech that is uttered out of the mouth of man. That the Lord does not hear. So when brothers are making videos. And we're sighing and crying about the abomination done throughout the cities of the world. Not just in America. Throughout the earth. The Most High hears that. So he says set a mark upon these particular men. Mark them. These brothers that are making videos, brothers that are out on the streets, there is different parts of this administration. You may have brothers that are deeply, deeply on the street, but they don't make videos. Okay, you have brothers that deeply, deeply on the video of social media, and they're raising up thousands. Brothers and sisters are on the, on the social media like YouTube, Ustream, Facebook, and they're raising up thousands. Thousands upon thousands of brothers and sisters are listening to their videos. Watching their videos and they're being refined right there also. So there are many different avenues to this body. The arms and the hands do not do what the ears and the eyes do. The head does not do what the toes do. The toes do not do what the elbows or the ankles do. So there are different administrations to this body. Just like the human body we have here, there are different administrations to every body part that we have. In this word, you may have brothers that have been given an administration, that have been given an order. That order is to do what they're doing. But they're still doing, the, doing what they're supposed to be doing to raise up the kingdom of Israel and to raise up the Most High's people. So each one of us have a service. We're a part of this body. Understand that. Paul told us about the body. I'll go into that, to that in, in another subject. All right, But each one of us have a different administration. But we're all working toward the kingdom of salvation. Everybody got that. So every one of us has a different administration, a different office that we were given. 
Some brothers, you know, may not be apt to teach, but they can help the word in other ways. The sisters, they can help the word in other ways. Each one of us have been given a different administration, a different office. But if thousands are listening, thousands are coming in, then brother, you're doing your job. And you're reaching probably more people than some of the brothers are on the street. All right? Verse 5. And, and, and to the others he said, In my hearing, go ye after him through the city, and smite, and let not your eye spare, neither have ye pity. In a vision, this was Ezekiel was seeing. He was seeing the righteous being marked and set apart, and he was seeing the wicked being punished and put to death and destroyed. Slay utterly old and young men. Excuse me, slay utterly old and young, both maid, maids and little children and women. But come not near any man upon whom is the mark. And begin at my sanctuary. You see that? Begin at the sanctuary. Many of these pastors and these preachers are going to be punished for the things that they teach in these uh, Islamic imams. Egyptology. <clears throat> you got other Israelite brothers intermingling in with them. I, I, I warn these guys about that, but they're not going to listen. What are you dealing with Egyptologists for? What are you doing walking around in the street? Why are you appearing on this guy's set with set netta? Why are you appearing uh, on his channel just to get publicity, just to become popular? What are you dealing with these Egyptologist guys for? What do you keep? What do you keep uniting with these guys for? What do you keep going on their channel for? What do you? What, what do you keep uniting for uh, and conversating with these guys for? You, these guys are idolaters. They do. They hate the Most High. Yet you still dealing with them, and you know who I'm talking about. Go on set. Was it set Netta? Set Netta. His channel. Go on his channel, and you see different Israelite groups out there constantly using his his, his channel to get their own agenda pushed out. All they care about is publicity. They're not part of the 144,000. They're still intermingling with idolaters. Those who are dealing with paganism. They, they're more concerned about uh, people uh, joining them in popularity. But the scriptures told us not to engage in, in any form of relationship with an idolater. These Egyptologists, and they stick around the Israelites. Trying to get publicity too. That's what bothers me and pisses me off a lot. They they right up in the brothers' faces on this so-called unity of black people. There is no unity of black people if you are an idolater. If you're following Egyptology or you're following Islam or any religion outside of this book, we ain't dealing with you. It ain't no black unity here. We don't we stress unity among the nation of Israel, our people of Negro descent. Who are a byproduct of the cargo slave ship. They are the children of Israel. We unite with our brothers and sisters in the faith. But don't come to me with that black unity stuff. This ain't the Black Panthers here. This channel right here is not. We, I ain't uniting with none of you brothers out there. If you're dealing with Islam or you Egyptology or Afrocentricity. You're not my brother. But you got some of these Israelite groups that are still uniting with said Netta and Polite and all these different guys holding conferences and meetings and debates with these guys. I'm not dealing with that. What, what's this? You know, a brother contacted me uh, last night, actually, and he asked me, can I come on his radio show, this Internet radio show? I'll, I'll determine whether or not I'll do it. See, this word is going out and people, you don't know who's watching you all over the world. But the Bible told us to avoid foolish questions and contention. Contention means debating, arguing. I will let the Most High decide what, what will I do. But this debating and stuff, and most of these brothers that, that are on this, on this radio show that he wants me to appear on, they're not believers in this word. So what are we debating about? Go your way and I'll go mine. I'll teach the people who listen or believe in Hebrew Israelites. If you follow whatever philosophy you follow, then you follow that. And we'll let the Most High be judged in that day of judgment. But arguing and debating, that's not something I want to do. I put the word out for thousands to listen to over the, over the internet. Those who want to hear it, they will hear it. Those who are meant to hear it, they will hear it. Those brothers and sisters are sealed. Alright? Verse 6. Ezekiel 9 and 6. Slay utterly old and young, both maids and little children and women. But come not near any man upon whom is the mark. 
and begin at my sanctuary. Then they began at the, an the ancient men. Then they began at the ancient men which were before the house. And he said unto them, Defile the house and fill the courts with the slain. You see that? Go ye forth. And, and, and they went forth and slew in the city. You see that? And it came to pass while they were slaying them. And I was left that I fell upon my face and cried and said, O Lord God, will thou destroy all the residue of Israel in thy pouring out of thy fury upon Jerusalem? Then said he unto me, and the iniquity of the house of Israel in Judah is exceedingly great. And the land is full of blood, and the city is full of perverseness. For they say, the Lord has forsaken the earth, and the Lord seeth not. You see that? Many of our people say that this Bible is not real. It's a book of fantasies. It's a fairy tale. It's a white man's book. We can do whatever we want. The Most High's anger and rage is so heavily against the children of Israel, he was ready to destroy and annihilate all of us. He said he didn't want to do it, but because of the perverseness of the children of Israel and the disobedience and stiff neck and unruliness of Israel, this was the only solution. Slay them. Now this is a vision that Ezekiel is seeing. Now listen to what the Most High is going to say to Israel again. Then said he unto me, the iniquity of the house of Israel, this is Ezekiel, the ninth chapter, verse 9. Then said he, Ezekiel 9 and 9. Then said he unto me, the iniquity of the house of Israel in Judah is exceedingly great, and the land is full of blood, and the city is full of perverseness. This, this represents us all over the earth. Okay? For they say, the Lord has not forsaken the earth, and the, has forsaken the earth, and the Lord seeth not. And as for me also, my eye shall not pity, neither will I have pity, but I will recompense their way upon their head. And behold, the man clothed with linen, which had the inkhorn by his side, reported the matter, saying, I have done as thou hast commanded. There's going to be a lot of destruction in that day of retribution, brothers, sisters. There's going to be a lot of punishment upon our people. There's going to be a lot of bloodshed. So I don't have time to really debate with anybody if they're disbelievers. So be it. If you're a disbeliever, so be it. But there's going to be a lot of destruction because a lot of brothers and sisters out there are disbelievers. That's a prophecy of what's to occur in the future. Don't place your hands upon those that have been sealed. But to those who have not been sealed... They're going to wreak the ultimate destruction, the ultimate punishment. The scripture says, two-thirds of our people shall be cut off, while one-third shall be saved through the midst of the fire of tribulation. We're going to go through the persecution and tribulation from the people of the world. But we know we have a crown stored up for us in the kingdom, to those of us who are blessed to make it in. And I pray I'm there. Alright, let's go to Revelations. Let's go to the book of Revelations, the 14th chapter. Revelation 14 and 1. And I looked, and, and lo, a lamb stood on the Mount Zion, and with him 140 and 4,000, having his father's name written in their foreheads. We will truly know what the name of the father truly is. Because another sister on the comment board asked me, is the, father, is the heavenly father's name Ahia? The Bible says we should trust in God rather than man. I believe that's in the book of Acts. The third chapter, verse 29. If I'm wrong, let's go to it. Let's I believe it's in the book of Acts. Hold on, give me a minute. I believe it's oh, it's in the uh uh the book of Acts. 29, the fifth chapter, verse Acts, the book of Acts, the fifth chapter, verse 29. The book of Acts, the fifth chapter, verse 29. Then Peter and the other apostles answered and said, We ought to obey God rather than man. That was Acts 5 and 29. Should we obey man or rather the most high? I did a video call a word to the Hebrew Israelites. And and let me let me say something here. And I'm not going to try to make this video uh real long, but let me let me just say something. And I ask all of you brothers and sisters out there, newcomers and new subscribers to my channel, I ask you this. Watch all of my videos before you come on the comment board asking me questions that I've already did videos on. Be slow to speak and quickly to hear. I 
warned y'all about this before. You're so quick to jump on the comment board and ask questions. But you don't watch all the videos. This is newcomers now. Brothers and sisters that have been following me from since 2012, 2013. Alright, I'm not talking to y'all. But a lot of the newcomers, they just want to jump right into it. Take baby steps. Watch all the videos because it will answer most of your questions before you get ready to jump on the comment board. So a sister asked me, is the father's name Ahaya? But if she had watched my video, A Word to the Hebrew Israelites, and all of my videos, that would have answered her question. So I just wrote on the comment board, watch my video, but I'm not going to do that anymore. If you asking me questions that I've already dealt with, and there, I've done over like 40 videos, go and watch the videos, and it will answer your questions. Now, there might be certain subjects I haven't done yet. I'll get to that. But most of your questions are right there in the videos. Hold on a minute, because the videos can answer your questions before you ask them. So I just wanted to put that out there. All right, to a lot of the new subscribers that are coming to the channel. And, um, and I thank you for subscribing and asking questions. But most of your answers could be answered in the videos that I've done a few years back. If you just took the time to watch them all, it would answer your questions. So anybody asking me about the name of the Most High, the name of the Messiah, and why do I use this name, or what, watch the video and I'll explain everything. All right? Here's Revelation, the first, the 14th chapter, verse 1. And I looked, and lo, a lamb stood on Mount Zion, and with him a hundred and forty and four thousand, having his father's name written in their forehead. That hundred and forty-four thousand, without a shadow of a doubt, is going to know the name of the Father. Some may say it's Ahia, some say it's Yahweh, some say it's Jehovah. As I dealt with in that video, a word to the Hebrew Israelites. We will truly know the name of the Father when the Messiah has rescued that 144,000. This is going to be the governmental body that's going to be reigning under the Messiah and the 24 elders. The 24 elders are the 12 sons of Jacob and the 12 disciples, 12 apostles, 24. Okay, the 144,000 is going to be beneath them. And they're going to be the governmental structure, the governmental body that's in this kingdom that will reign under the Most High in Christ, of course. And they will be that governmental body. In every government, in every kingdom you live in, you have a Senate, a Congress, and you have a whole, a whole, whole governmental structure that helps the president run this government. That's what that 144,000 men will be. Okay, they will be a governmental body, a governmental structure. I don't want anybody asking me this question again, because I've already dealt with this before. But a sister asked me this question, and she's new to the channel. All right, I'll do it this last time, and I'll answer this question. The 144,000 is that governmental body. And these are men, okay, that will be in that governmental body with the Messiah. All right, verse 2, And I heard a voice from heaven. As the voice of many waters, and as the voice of great thunder, and I, and I heard the voice of harpers harping with their harps, and they sung as it were a new song before the throne. They sung before the throne a new song. This is the true servants of the Most High, that 144,000 that has been redeemed from the earth. Okay, the new song that they're going to sing is a song that no man on earth has ever heard. And they're going to be singing praise unto the Most High and singing praise unto the Messiah in the day of, of judgment. When he's in his 1,000 year millennial reign, go and watch my video, Kingdom of Heaven and the Second Coming of Christ, and get the understanding of that. Alright? And they sung as it were a new song before the throne and before the four beasts and the elders. And no man could learn that song but the hundred and forty and four thousand which were redeemed from the earth. No man. So it's showing you that the hundred and forty four thousand are men. It's not women. It's not women in, in this governmental structure right here. These are all men. And that hundred and forty four thousand were the only ones that could learn this song. Meaning they were the only ones that were required to learn it. These are they which were not defiled with women. When it says they were not defiled with women, they did not sin for women. They did not allow fornication and sexual immorality to reign in their spirit that, that pulled them out of themselves. They fought off every vibrant, wicked spirit. Women coming to you. Let's just give an example on, on the social media. Women come to you dressed provocatively. 
trying to seduce you to get you and, and let me let me let me address that now you have certain sisters that have subscribed to my channel now, this channel the true message of Christ 7 is a channel in which I preach and teach the most high's words this is a spiritual channel where the word of the Most High is being taught. But you'll have so many perverse and evil, wicked women subscribing to the channel. Right? Dress provocatively. Okay, you go on their Google Plus and you look at their Google Plus photos. They're dressed very scantily, uh, 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 scantily dressed provocatively. Yet you come in on a channel where the word of the Lord is being taught. You perverse, evil, wicked women. You carnal evil wicked women why would you come on a channel where a brother is teaching the words of the most high yet you come in there on the channel with your blouse hat open and, and different provocative outfits that means that you are a woman that is truly in tune with the spirit of Satan Satan has totally engulfed your spirit to come on a channel where a brother is preaching the word of the most high and then you come on this channel go and look at the comments on the comment board and look at some of the profile pictures of some of these women that come on the on, on the profile. Let's see if I can find it. Let, it's not really important for me to show y'all. But let me let me just see if I could show y'all something. I'm gonna show you some of these. Should I do it? Well let me see. Let me see. I'm gonna show you some of these women that come on the channel. You know, when it says 144,000 men were not defiled with women, it's saying that these men did not sin for women. They didn't give women domination and power over their soul, mind, and body, and their spirit. I Meaning they rejected the wickedness of, of what these women, of what these women uh, were trying to push on their mind and their spirit. These men rejected that. And they gave their soul uh, wholly over to the Most High. Yeah, we make mistakes because we're men, right? But at times in our lives, every human being makes mistakes. But these brothers, they didn't give their soul over to the whoredom of these women. Now, I'm going on my channel here on my, on my phone. And I'm going to see if I can go to the comments. And I want to show you. How some, how some of these wicked women are real perverse and how they would come on your channel on a channel where you're preaching the words of the Most High and they would come on the channel very perversely and I'm probably not the only one but there have been women out there that have done this let me see if I could if, I could, if this is the right video right here just give me a minute I just want to show y'all and then we'll get back into the lesson I don't mean to take too much time with this if I can't find it, then so be it. All right, well, you know what? I'm not even going to waste too much time on that. Because some of the women that are watching this video, they know exactly who I'm talking about. So it's not really necessary for me to go into that. But you go on, the, you go on my comment board. Right, go on the comment board and you can see for yourself. And some of these women are subscribers to my channel also. You know, not not they're 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 not just uh commenting on the comment board, but they're actual subscribers too. You understand? Now some odd uh, reason Satan is not letting me find it. But all of you out there, if you truly want to hear what I'm saying, go on the comment boards, do a video to, to the newer videos that I've done, and you can see some of these women that come on the channel. And they're dressed very provocatively. And these are some of the subscribers. And you go and I look at my subscription. And you'll see some of these women come on there. And these women should not even be uh, on, a, on a channel where a brother is, is, is speaking the words of the Most High. But Satan has engulfed the spirit in a lot of these women. That they'll come on your channel dressed that way. You know, because these women have hardly given their spirit over to Satan. You understand? So I'm not really going to deal with that. I don't think I can find it here. I just wanted to show you at least one. But, let me see. Not a big deal if I can't find it. You know? Let me 
Merci. You understand? That's one. I can't find the other one. But if you go on the channel, you'll see for yourselves. All right, let's get back into the lesson. But I just wanted to show y'all that that these 144,000 men did not let women pervert their spirit and pervert their soul. But they rebuked the wickedness of these women and they stayed loyal unto the Most High. Sorry about that. I just wanted to show y'all. Uh, but uh, it's not a big deal if I, couldn't, if I can't find it. Alright. But just go on the comment board and you can see for yourselves of some of my newer videos and some of my older ones too and you'll see for yourselves alright here is uh, Revelations the 14th chapter verse 4 these are they which were not defiled with women for they are virgins these are they which follow the lamb wherever, wherever soever he goeth these were redeemed from among men being the first fruits unto God and to the Lamb. And in their mouth was found no guile. Guile symbolically represents liars. Those who have, are cunning, crafty, um, conniving, you know, deceitful. You have certain men out there who know they're lying. The Nation of Islam, but that organization is a lying organization. That organization is not preaching the true words of the Most High. And you brothers and sisters out there know it. So that's an organization that has guile in its mouth. Because there are organizations out there that preaches lies to the people. You understand? The Most High told us to reframe ourselves from being amongst men like that. Okay, because these men don't represent our Lord, our Savior, our King, and our Messiah. They don't represent the Most High in Christ. You understand? They don't, they don't represent the knowledge of, of this book. So why should we intermingle with them? This is, this is the problem that I have with a lot of these different brothers out there intermingling with other brothers out there of other faiths. Do you understand what I'm saying? If they're not in this word, I don't deal with them. If they're not, if they're not coming uh, in, in, this, in, this, in this gathering right here, then I don't want nothing to do with them. Okay, these men are idolaters. They're pagans. I don't want nothing to do with them. All right, but the, uh, Revelation 14, chapter verse 5 says, In their mouth was found no guile. For they are without fault before the throne of, of God. Alright? Now, there's something I want to show you now. Let's go to the, the book of uh, Revelation, the 16th chapter. I'm going to switch gears a little bit. And we're going to come back to the 144,000. I'm going to switch gears a little bit now. Because some people had a problem with the video I did, Should We Flee America? And I said that America was New York City. I mean, excuse me, Babylon was New York City. But some people believe all of America is Babylon. But the Bible tells us that Babylon was a great city. Not a country. A city. And in this superpower, if America is the most powerful superpower on this earth, we, which we all know, then it must have a city that represents its glory, its power, and its majesty. That's New York City, not L.A., not Chicago, not Miami, and not Atlanta. Mm -mm. Those are great cities that um, uh, exemplify America's beauty. But New York City is the epitome of every one of the cities in New York, excuse me, in, in America. That's Mystery Babylon. And I explained it, why the United Nations is there. Why is the United Nations there? Why are all the kings of the earth coming to the United Nations? In New York City because that is the format of the new world order and that's why they come to Babylon that's why they come to New York City why wasn't the United Nations built in LA or Chicago or in Atlanta Washington DC why was it built in New York why is Wall Street there why is the New York Stock Exchange there why is the garment district there the jewelry district there why are entertainers all over that city? Why is it the biggest city in America? Why does it have the tallest skyscrapers in, in America? 
Why is it one of the most expensive cities in the world to live in? Why is it called the city that never sleeps? Because all forms of abomination and wickedness and sexual immorality and perverseness manifests itself right there in a city like New York. That's why it's called the city that never sleeps. Evil spirits and demonic spirits, demonic energies travel throughout that city late at night. That's why it never sleeps. The later it gets at night, the more perverse the city becomes. Homosexuality runs rapid throughout New York City, down Greenwich Village. They even have their own newspaper called the Village Voice. Ask the question and answer the question. Why is the United Nations in New York City? Why is there a city called Babylon on Long Island? Now, Revelation 16, chapter verse 19, And that in the great city was divided into three parts, and the cities of the nations fell, and, and, and great Babylon came in remembrance before God to give unto, unto her the cup of the wine of the fierceness of his wrath. So the scripture says, And the great city was divided into three parts. Some people think it's all, it's, some people think it's talking about America. And when it says in the great city was divided into three parts, that's representing the Atlantic coast, the central coast, and the Pacific coast. Right? This is what some people believe. Some people also believe it's talking about America splitting itself into three parts, meaning that different states are going to start breaking itself away from the whole country. Like they say in California may someday slip. Uh, uh, and divide itself away. That's not talking about that. Because there's no scriptural evidence to, to, to back it up. The three parts it's talking about. It's talking about spiritual. The, the, the Bible says that this great city Babylon. Is not the actual physical land of Babylon. But it's the spirit of Babylon. You brothers and sisters. Some of you don't have the spiritual aspect of wisdom to understand the scripture that's why i did the video called wisdom some of you don't have the spiritual understanding spiritually you, you're looking at things in the physical and a lot of these different leaders of these different groups they're dealing more with physical scientific uh, um explanations instead of dealing with the spiritual we let's go to the book of revelation the 17th chapter and there came one of the seven angels which had the seven vials and talked with me Saying unto me, Come hither, I will show unto thee the judgment of the great whore that sitteth upon many waters. Now this was a, an apocalyptic vision that John the Revelator was seeing. This was not literal. It was an allegory, a metaphor. It was a vision that he saw. With whom the kings of the earth have committed fornication and the inhabitants of the earth have been made drunk with the wine of her fornication. So he carried me away in the spirit into the wilderness. The wilderness represents any kingdom or any nation outside of the nation of Israel. Okay? And as I said again, North America is considered that wilderness. You know, like the nation of Islam said that the, the black man is lost in this wilderness of North America. And any, the wilderness represents any country or any land mass outside of the nation of Israel. And outside of the land of Israel would be considered the wilderness. Alright? And I saw a woman sit upon a scarlet colored beast... Full of names of blasphemy, having the seven heads and the ten horns. Watch the video that I did, Should We Flee America? And I broke all this down. And the woman was arrayed in purple and scarlet colored and decked with gold and precious stones and pearls, having a golden cup in her hand, full, full of the abomination and filthiness of her fornication. And upon her forehead was the name, Mystery Babylon. Mystery Babylon the Great. The mother of harlots. And the abomination of the earth. So this was three spiritual manifest manifestations of this mystery Babylon. This great city that was going to reign over the finances and the economic stability of nations and kingdoms and governments of the earth. Will be represented by three manifestations spiritually to describe this kingdom and also this city. Mystery Babylon the Great, parenthesis, the mother of harlots, two, right, and the abomination of the earth. Three manifestations representing the characteristic of this great city, which is spiritually 
mystery Babylon. Why did it say mystery Babylon? Because it's not the actual physical land of Babylon, but it's taken on the spirituality of ancient Babylon. So it's broken down into three different attributes. That's why it says, I will divide, and, and the great city was divided into three parts. Three parts spiritually, not physically. Spiritually, these three parts would manifest the spirit of this great city. Mystery Babylon the Great, the mother of harlots and the abomination of the earth. Alright, let's go to Revelation the 11th chapter, precept upon precept. Revelation 11 and 8. And their dead bodies shall lie in the street of the great city, which spiritually... Y'all got it now? Spiritually... Is called Sodom in Egypt. That's the abominations. All right, Revelation 17. Revelation 17 and 5. And upon her forehead was a name written, Mystery Babylon the Great, the mother of harlots, right? And the abomination of the earth. The abomination of the earth represents the sexual immorality, homosexuality, lesbianism, fornication that dominates that city. Yes, it happens in San Francisco. Yes, it happens in LA. But New York is the biggest city in America with more people. Therefore, it's more abomination there. And it says, and the, and the abomination of the earth, the mystery Babylon the Great, the mother of harlots, it has seduced all nations through how? Witchcraft and sorcery. I told y'all when the Twin Towers went down, 2011, September, September 2011, with 9-11, right? You saw in the smoke demonic faces and demonic images in the smoke. That meant they were casting demonic spirits. They were performing witchcraft. Ancient Babylon as well as ancient Egypt was known for black magic and witchcraft. So it says, And their dead bodies shall lie in the street of the great city, which spiritually is called Sodom in Egypt, where also our Lord, Lord was crucified. Was Christ or who the world calls Christ crucified in America? Was it crucified? Uh, if you want to say all of Babylon is um, America, was he crucified in America? I say Babylon is that great city, which is New York City. Was he crucified there? No, not physically, but spiritually he was. New York City is a haven for subversive teachings, subversive doctrine. You have the 5% nation that started right there in Harlem. New York, by a man named Clamorous 13X. And most of our people, especially back in the 70s, 80s, 90s, up into this decade that we're in now, follow the teachings of the 5% nation. Now remember, let's go back, brothers, back to the 80s and the 90s. There were a lot of politically and socially conscious rap groups back in the early 90s, right? Most of them were members of the 5% nation. You had Eric B. and Rakim, who started in the late 80s. You had Wu-Tang Clan. Okay, you had some brothers right across the bridge in Jersey, like La Kim Shabazz, and you had Poor Righteous Teachers down in Trenton. You okay, but let's just deal with New York. Okay, you had Nas. He was part of the 5% Nation. Even Jay-Z was affiliated with the 5% Nation and Dr. Malachi Z. York's teaching. Um, Africa Bambata. They were dealing with Afrocentricity. KRS-One was dealing with more Afrocentricity. Okay, you had several rap groups back from New York in the establishing of the socially politically conscious music in the late 80s, early 90s. Public Enemy, Professor Griff, they were all linked and tied to the Nation of Islam through the 5% Nation. Then you had Dr. York and the Sons of the Green Light. Then, he, you know, he changed it over various times. Uh, Nubian Nation, Nubian Islamic Hebrews, Holy Tabernacle Ministries, and it's various, various different uh, degrees of... of Doctrine he follows until he changes his different, he changes the name of his organization. You know, he's in prison now, but he changes the names of his organizations. But Dr. York was very influential in New York. Then you got the Nation of Islam there. Then you got the Jehovah's Witness. The headquarters of the Jehovah's Witness is right there in Brooklyn. Seven day Adventists are there. Not to mention traditional Sunni Islam is practiced there. Not, not to mention the Nation of Islam, but New York is a haven for subversive activity. 
subversive um, teachings. The Black Panthers are there. The new Black Panthers are there. Um, there's so many different ideologies and philosophies there. That's how it's Babylon also. Because it represents confusion. So many different religious denominations are there. People from foreign countries move to New York and there are Hindu temples there. Buddhist temples there. You understand? Millions upon millions of Asians come from China or Japan and they come there and they have their own philosophies and their own religions and they even have places where they all congregate. In a city that large of over 12 million people, there are so many different religious denominations there. That's how it's Babylon also. And then it says Sodom because of the homosexuality and lesbianism that's practiced there. Greenwich Village is a place known for homosexuality because all my family live in New York. And as a kid, I grew up going up there. And you know about New York. You know about Hunts Point also. You know about different areas about New York that's best not to be up in those areas. And it says Egypt. The children of Israel was captive in, in uh in, in, in uh, Babylon, just, I mean, uh, Egypt, just as our people were captive in New York City. Let me tell you something. A lot of you may not know this, but New York City was built upon the backs of slaves. Charleston, South Carolina is the only city that had more slaves than New York City. They say it's estimated about 42 to 43 percent of all New Yorkers owned slaves back around 1664. It was only Charleston, South Carolina, because that's where the slaves were brought to the slave port right there in Charleston, South Carolina, the slave market, okay? But New York City was the second largest slave-owning uh, city. I thought it was Jamestown, Virginia, but I looked it up. No, New York had more slaves than even Jamestown, Virginia. And New York City was built upon the backs of slaves. So that's how it's... the this 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 spiritual is is, is uh spiritually is called Sodom in Egypt where our Lord was also crucified. The lies that are being taught on Christ. So many false ideologies stem out of New York, and then they spill into different uh areas around the around the globe and around the country. Many different Hebrew Israelites, like the I U the the I S U P not the I S U P K but um the original U P K. Israelite Church of God and Jesus, no, yeah, Israelite Church of God and Jesus Christ, but they were formerly known as the Israeli Church of UPK, a blasphemous Hebrew Israelite group. Many blasphemous Israelite groups in New York, strictly Torah centered groups that don't believe on the Messiah in Christ, excuse me, don't believe on the Messiah. They, 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 they strictly believe in the, in the Old Testament, they don't accept the new. Stem right out of New York. So New York is that haven, brothers. It is Mystery Babylon. I don't mean to take too much time, but I just wanted to break that down to you. All right. Let's go back to Revelation, the seventh chapter. We're going to wind down in a few. This is Revelation, the seventh chapter, verse one. And after these things, I saw four angels standing on the four corners of the earth. The angels, Michael, Raphael, Uriel, and Gabriel, spiritually in a vision. He's seen his vision of the angels holding back the winds so that the earth does not emerge into an all-out global warfare. Not yet. Not, not until the 144,000 men are sealed first. Okay? And it says, And after these things I saw four angels standing on the four corners of the earth, holding the four winds of the earth, that the wind should not blow on the earth, nor on the sea, nor on any trees, holding back destruction. They're holding back Armageddon. And I, and I saw another angel ascending from the east, having the seal of the living God. And he cried with a loud voice to the four angels to whom it was given to hurt the earth and sea, saying, Hurt not the earth, neither the sea, nor the trees, till we have sealed the servants of our God in their forehead. And I heard the number of them which were sealed. There were sealed 140 and 4,000 of all the tribes of the children of Israel. Right? All the tribes of the children of Israel. But were they women or were they men? The Bible says they were men. Alright? Let's go to the book of Proverbs. As we begin to wind down, let's go to Proverbs, the 8th chapter, verse 4. Proverbs 8 and 4. Unto you, O men, I call, and my voice is unto the sons of men. Unto you, O men, I call, meaning I'm calling the men to be the teachers and the ministers of my mouth. The women will prophesy, but the women will teach women and children. I'll do it because a sister asked me, can you do a video explaining our role and our position in serving the Most High? That's a good question. I'll, I'll, I'll go into that Most High willing. Okay, that is a good question. You do need to know that. 
Okay, I did a video called Women Teachers, but maybe I need to go deeper into it and explain a little more. Okay, unto you, O men, I call, and my voice is to the sons of men. That's uh, Proverbs, the 8th chapter, verse 4. Let's get another precept. As we begin to wind down, I'm going to sh show you just a few precepts proven to you that the Most High is calling the men to be the ministers and teachers of his mouth. That you got a lot of these women out here on the YouTube calling themselves preaching and teaching. And the father didn't call them to do that. Here is Luke the 12th chapter verse 32. Fear not little flock for it is your, is your father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. Fear not little flock for it is your father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. Let's find out who the flock is. Let's go to the book of Ezekiel. Let's get Ezekiel the 34th chapter verse 30. If you have your scriptures I want you to follow along with me. Here's Ezekiel 34. Ezekiel 34 and 30. Thus shall they know that I, the Lord their God, am with them, and that they, even the house of Israel, are my people, proving who the Lord's people are, says the Lord God. And ye, my flock, the flock of my pasture, are men, and I am your God, says the Lord God. So again, the Most High is telling us that the flock of his pasture are the men. The pasture represents the earth. The flock are the men, the, the leaders of Israel, and of course he's the good shepherd. Okay, so the pastor represents the whole earth. Okay, so the flock of his pasture are the men of Israel. Alright, now let's go to Revelation the 14th chapter. Revelation 14, let's start at 1 again. Actually, Revelation, did we already read that, but okay, let's go to 8. Revelation of 14 chapter verse 8. And there followed another angel saying, Babylon is fallen, is fallen, that great city, because she made all nations drink of the wine of the wrath of her fornication. I've already explained that. America has a heavy influence, but it is New York City who is the epitome of America's influence. That's why everybody wants to come to New York. Verse 9. And the third angel followed them, saying with a loud voice, If any man worship the beast and his image, and receive his mark in his forehead or in his hand, the same shall drink from the wine of the wrath of God, which is poured out without mixture into a cup of his indignation, and he shall be tormented with fire and brimstone in the presence of the holy angels and in the presence of the Lamb. And the smoke of their torment ascended up from forever and ever, and they have no rest day nor night, who worship the beast and his image, and whosoever receiveth the mark of his name. Here is the patience of the saints. Here are they that keep the commandments of God in, in the faith of Jesus. Or, because, you know, we know his name is not Jesus, but I'm just reading it as it is. I'll break down the mark of the beast and the image of the beast in another video. But the 144,000 didn't take it. And the Most High says that any brother or sister or anybody who take the mark of the beast or worship the, his name or his image the number of his name they shall all drink from the wrath of the wine of God poured out without mixture and they shall be tormented day and night forever in the presence of the holy angels and even in the presence of the lamb 144,000 won't take it alright we won't take the mark of the beast now let's go the second Thessalonians, the third chapter, verse 3. But the Lord is faithful, who shall establish you and keep you from evil. The Lord is going to keep us from evil. The Lord is going to keep the servants of the Most High from evil. Do you understand that? He's going to protect us. You don't have the power to protect yourself. Not against a force that we're fighting in this world. The Father will do it. He will protect us. Okay? That was 2 Thessalonians 3 and 3. Let's go to 2 Timothy, the 4th chapter, verse 8. 2 Timothy 4 and 8. Henceforth there is laid up for me a crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, shall give me at that day. And not to me only, but unto all them also that love his appearing. We pray, and I hope this scripture is relevant to me. We pray that the Father give us a crown. In that glorious Beautiful kingdom of salvation. Let's read again. Second Timothy, the fourth chapter, verse eight. First, verse eight. Second Timothy, Second Timothy, four and eight. Henceforth, there is laid up for me a crown of righteousness, which the Lord, 
the righteous judge shall give me at that day. And not only me only, but unto all of them also that love his appearing. So that's the day that we as Israelites are hoping for. And even some of the Gentiles out there that are believers, you know, they're going to be under Israel, but they'll, they'll be there in the kingdom too. But they won't have any power over Israel. Israel is going to be ruling in the kingdom. All nations are going to be there that believe on the Most High in Christ. Alright. Here is Isaiah the ninth chapter. Verse 6. For unto us a child is born. Unto us a son is given. And the government shall be upon his shoulder. And his name shall be called Wonderful Counselor. The Mighty God because he's God the Son. The Everlasting Father. He is our forefather. The Prince of Peace. Of the, of the increase of his government... In peace there shall be no end. So he's going to have a government. Okay. And 144,000 men are going to be in this government. Along with the 12 disciples. And the 12 sons of Jacob. Or the 24 elders. Upon the throne of David. And upon his kingdom. He's going to be sitting upon the throne of David. Go to the book of Luke. The first chapter. And read the entire first chapter. Actually you can start at let's say 33. And read to verse 80. Okay. Luke. The first chapter. And it'll prove that the Messiah will be sitting upon the throne of David. To all you newcomers out there who may not have seen that scripture. That's Luke, the first chapter. Start at verse 30. Actually, you can read the 33. And then you could jump over to Luke, the first chapter, verse 68. And read from 68. To 71. Actually you can read. To 80. From. 68 all the way to 80. And that will give you the description. Of what the Messiah's mission was. And he will be sitting upon the throne of David. In his 1000 year millennial reign. Upon his. This is Isaiah 9 and 7. Of the increase of his government. And peace there shall be no end. Upon the throne of David and upon his kingdom. To order it. See to order it. Meaning he's going to have an order, a, a structure that's going to be set up in his thousand year millennial reign. To order it, meaning he's going to have men that will obey him, that will follow his command. Watch my video of where, um, Kingdom of Heaven in the Second Coming of Christ. And to establish it with ju judgment, and to establish it with judgment and with justice for henceforth and even for forevermore. Forever. The zeal of the Lord of hosts will perform this. You see that? And it says, And the Lord sent a word unto Jacob, and it has litten upon Israel. Jacob and Israel are synonymous. One and the same. All twelve tribes. Ephraim, Manasseh, of Negro descent, our people, black people, so-called Negroes, are the, two, are the twelve tribes of the nation of Israel. The prophecies came to Israel. But the Gentiles will hear it too. Okay? And this will be the last scripture. Breaking down the the servants of the Most High and the King, uh, excuse me, the uh, hundred and forty four thousand. This is the book of Daniel. This is the book of Daniel, the twelfth chapter, verse one. And at that time shall Michael stand up, the great prince, which standeth for the children of thy people. And there shall be a time of trouble such as never wins was since there was a nation even to that same time. And at that time, thy people shall be delivered. The Father's going to deliver us. And he's going to safeguard and protect us. Okay? And, and at that time, thy people shall be delivered. Every one that shall be found written in the book. The book of life. Your names will be recorded. Our names, hopefully my name will be there also. That will be recorded in the Lamb's book of life. Verse 2. And many of them that sleep in the dust of the earth. Shall wake in some to everlasting life. Some to shame and everlasting contempt. And they that be wise shall shine as the brightness of the firmament. And they that turn many to righteousness as the stars forever and ever. And they that turn many to righteousness. This is what I'm trying to do. Turn brothers and sisters to the righteous order. To the righteous path for the Most High. Not intermingling with Egyptologists and Afrocentricity. And those fools out there following that foolishness. I'm not appearing on their TV shows, their radio shows. I'm not appearing on those, those who are not believers. 
This is my radio show right here. This is my internet social media channel right here. Those who want to hear the word, you click on the True Message of Christ channel and you come here to ministry right here. All right. Verse 4. But thou, O Daniel, shut up the words and seal the book even to the time of the end. Many shall run to and fro and knowledge shall be increased. Many brothers are trying to run to all this different knowledge, reading all these different books. Knowledge shall increase to and fro. But the scriptures tell us that the wisdom of this world is foolishness with the Most High. So with that, I want to say peace and blessings on to the nation of Israel. I want to say peace and blessings to everybody who watched this video, who got something out of the study. Until we meet again, I say peace to everybody, including foremost the nation of Israel. And with that, peace to the nation of Israel.